Should I replace my windows? Well, it's a good question. It's often the first one we think about when we want to make home warmer. So let's start by looking at where does heat actually go from at home? So 35% goes through your walls, 25% through the roof, 15% through the floor, 15% through doors. That leaves 10% to go through the windows. So it's not nearly as much as I thought it was going to be, but it's still significant. Now windows and doors class as fabric of the house. So I'd always go for doing those before you get a new sofa or a new carpet, because those are things that can be added afterwards when the budget allows. And by changing your windows, you will save energy and you'll reduce your bills and you'll also help the environment. Start by checking how your windows are doing now. Now, if you still have single glazed windows anywhere, then those are absolutely worth changing because they're always going to cost you money and energy efficiency. If you've got double glazing that's over 20 years old, they're worth checking as well. The ideal way is if you can get hold of a thermal imaging camera and some Council, some sustainability groups have those to borrow. Uh, they don't cost anything. They're sometimes you have to leave a deposit, but you can borrow those and it only takes an hour to go around your house and see where the problems are. There's also phone apps, I understand, that can work really well. If you can't do that, then take the advantage of any cold and windy day and just walk around the house and test out each window. Be testing out where the window goes into the frame of its particular area, where the frame itself goes into the aperture in the wall, anywhere that there's likely to be gaps, test out to see is air coming through. Some of those you can just draft proof or you can fill in to stop the draft, but you may find that there's draft coming in that is part of the window structure. And the other thing to notice is how much cold comes off the actual pane itself, because air moves from warm to cold, so any cold surface is costing you money. If you decide you are going to change your windows, then there are a few terms that it's really useful to understand. The most important one of those is U-value. Now, this will be dropped into every sales conversation you have, but often very quickly alongside of all sorts of other things, so you probably miss it. But it's the most important thing you need to know. U-value is the measure of how much heat can move through the material, in this case, the window. And it's measured in watts per meter squared Kelvin which you can go and look up. <laughs> I'm not going to try and explain that one. All you need to know is the lower, the better. So if we just take as an example, a single glazed window will be 5.6 watts per meter squared Kelvin. An old double glazed window will be about 2.8. A new double glazed window will be about 1.3 and a triple glaze will be 0.6, so very cosy. Just to confuse the issue, some vendors will talk about R value, but don't worry, R value is just like U value upside down, so then you go in higher the better. U value, lower the better, R value, higher the better. Another term you might hear is thermally broken window, which sounds remarkably alarming, doesn't it? What it means is that they've put some sort of material in between the layers of glazing, which stops any heat moving across between the layers and it just makes them more efficient. So if you've got windows that are below one, then they probably are automatically thermally broken. And then finally, they will talk about solar gain. And if they don't, you need to ask them about that. Solar gain is quite simply the heat that you get in a room when the sun shines in. So if you've got south facing windows, you don't want to lose, that's a bit of free heat. So you want to keep that. So the norm is generally to have a double glazed window in a room that has solar gain. And if you've got a, a north or east facing window, then you go for triple because triple won't let anything in. As always, before you go and see a provider, then it's worth doing a bit of preparation. 
First of all, think about your budget. Are you going to need some finance? Lots of the companies will do zero interest finance, but it's always worth checking. How much are you going to pay out over the time? Look and see if there's any grants in your area. In the UK at the moment, there aren't any grants that are specifically for windows but they may be included in grants that are available for low income families. So that's worth checking out. Think about your timing. If you're choosing a window that's made abroad, then it might take a bit longer to arrive. So think about when you need them. If it's part of a big process, then speak to your builder or speak to the project manager to see when they're going to be needed. I can tell you from personal experience that living without doors and windows can be a pretty miserable experience. But the other side of that is remember to always think long term because those windows are going to be there for a very long time. Consider the structure of the window that you want. The most common ones are made with UPVC, aluminium or wood and then you get combinations of the two. Our triple glazed are all aluminium and wood together. Find out the energy efficiency of the frame. Remember you want the U value of the overall window, not just the pane of glass itself. So you need to understand the energy efficiency of the wood, the aluminium or the UPVC. Replacing old windows with new UPVC is the most common nowadays. This window that we've got in my study at the back of the house is about 15 years old and I check it periodically with the thermal camera and it's doing fine. When I first moved into this house 46 years ago, I wanted to reduce the noise coming in from the road and vice versa. So I had secondary glazing fitted in the front two rooms and it's still going strong. It's really just like Oh, you can see it's still fitting tightly. It's like putting an additional window inside and you can have it put really over most windows. If you're in a conservation area or in a listed building, this may be your only option. But I can tell you it's working really well. And we just put it back up because why throw it on the tip when it's doing a perfectly good job? Finally, here's a new glass that I found. It's called Q-In or C-U-In, not sure how you say it, but it's a double glaze unit with a membrane that runs down between the glass and that it manages to give it a U value of 0.6. That's just the glass. Once the glass is in the frame, the whole frame, the whole window comes to a U value of about 1.1. But it's incredibly useful when you want a bifold door. We wanted bifolds here and triple glazing is just too heavy for the mechanism. So we've got a bifold with Q in glass. And here's another thing you might like. It's called a floating corner. So the bifold opens it that way. Then out goes the floating corner door and you have a big wide open space. So queuing glass makes all of that possible. So there are lots of options to choose from but do remember prepare yourself because as soon it's the same with any salesperson I don't know what you think but I find I can easily start feeling befuddled and then think oh it'll do. So much better to be prepared and know your terminology. If you want to know more about retrofit and energy efficiency, then take a look at this video. And if you're interested in what else we've done to our house, then look at this video from Everything Electric Show. That'll give you a great overview. And if you've any questions, please ask me. I'd love to talk to you.